Okay, YouTube viewers, what we're going to do is we're going to replace the front tire and we'll do the back in a little bit. So the first thing you want to do is release your brake. So these brakes have a quick release option. It just moves up like that. It's very simple. And then, of course, you release your quick release handle there and the wheel drops out just like that. All right. So then, a lot of times, you won't have a cap, but if you do, just remove the cap. It's all really simple. Loosen up the Presta valve, if you have Prestas, and let the air out of the tire. Then there's a uh, little nut here. Usually it's hand tight. You can just spin it off. Once you have all the air out, you want to go around and just squeeze, break the bead, as we call it. Um, bicycle beads are pretty easy to break. You just go all the way around. These tires have been on a long time, so they're really, they've kind of stuck over the years. And so you just squeeze it in, just, you know, squeeze it real good. Get it loose all the way around. And then after that, where the valve is at, you want to go on the opposite side. And usually you can just squeeze it and get it over the rim. Now, some tires you can just do it by hand. This one is not going to be one of them. It's really in there hard, so I'm going to get some tire levers. Here we have a couple of tire levers. They have a hook on one edge and then something to slide under the bead on the other. And so what you want to do, since the tire won't come off just pulling it by hand, I'm going to just hook this under the edge of the bead and lift it up like that. And you can see that it pulls the bead out over. Now this hook is to hold it in the spoke like that. I've got the one hooked and so I'm going to try to get this other one under there and just slide it along. And it can be a little difficult at first but once you get it moving and it gets a good portion of it over the rim, you see how it just kind of came loose like that? And you saw the crumbs falling out of there too. That tells you that this tire is old. It's what we call dry rotted. So then you just go all the way around. You see just the crumbs falling out. It's, it's in pretty bad shape. Although it looks good on the outside, the bottom line is the tire is 26 years old and it's dried out and the rubber's not supple. So it's not a good tire to be riding on. Okay, so we got one side off. So that's good. So I'll unhook this one. Now we have to do the other side. So what we'll do is we'll reach under and grab the other side. Okay. We'll hook that. So now our tool is right there. It's through the other side. And so then we'll take this tool and just hook it along there. And again, the first pull is kind of hard, as you can see, and I'm the tube is getting pinched in there too. I'm not going to keep this tube because it's also 26 years old, I'm guessing. And then once it gets to a point, you just pop it off like that. And there you have it. The tire is separated from the wheel. So then the thing you want to do is check here. You got good rim tape. So you want to make sure that it's nice and smooth. That all the ends of the spokes are lower than the surface of the rim. And there's nothing sharp that could cause problems later. Okay, this feels pretty good. So this rim is now ready for a new tire. Okay, so I'm getting ready to put the new tire on. And something I wanted to point out is right here, I don't know if you can read that. It says direction and has an arrow pointing that way. So what that means is when you put the tire on the rim, the rim needs to turn that way, or the tire needs to turn that way. That's the way it's designed. So how you make sure is course the quick release always goes on the left side of the bike so if your direction of arrow is this way then you can tell okay the wheel goes in the bike this way and it'll turn this way so I want to make sure that I get the directional side of the tire on the right way some tires don't have that but if they do it's always a good idea you know put it on the correct way especially with mountain bike tires but even road tires have it now Alright, so the first thing I got to do is I'll thread the Presta valve through the hole in the rim. Okay, 
Now the way I like to do this, I usually just put on one side. See how I just got one side on there and I go all the way around. You know, we'll go around and we'll just get one side of the tire on. It's real easy to get to the edge. And if you just do one side at a time, it tends to be a little bit easier. If you're trying to squeeze both of them on at once, it gets a little bit difficult. We got one side on. The other thing you want to remember, I mean, you don't have to do this, but there's writing on the tire. These are Kenda tires, Crittenham Endurance. Okay, so what I like to do is put the valve stem kind of in the middle of the writing. It's just, you know, you don't have to do this, but I think it looks better. So, something to keep in mind. So then, once you get one side on, you can go ahead and put the other side on. And I like to put it in near the valve first, you know, to start it there. So when you're at the difficult part, you're not working with the valve also because that can work against you at times. And the thing you want to make sure of is make sure the tube is tucked up in there. You know, everything's just the way it should be. So you get a good chunk of it on there. All right, so I've got the top on pretty good. So just keep working it around. Make sure the tube doesn't get pinched. You know, there's all these importance just, you know, Make sure the tube doesn't get pinched between the rim and the tire as you're going around. And you'll get to the point where you've got like a little bit left, okay? So then you just go around and squeeze it. Make sure that the tire's in the valley. The beads are like in the valley of the wheel. And you just work it with your thumbs. I just keep pushing it over and pushing it over until boom, there it is, it's on. It's not too hard with a new tire with a um, Kevlar bead. It works pretty good. So that's it. The tire is on the rim. And I made sure that the tube didn't get pinched between the tire and the rim as it's going on. You made sure the tube is stuck up in there. If you've got a brand new tube, you may want to put just a little bit of air in it. Not any kind of pressure. Just put a couple of pumps in there to make the tube workable. A flat tube sometimes gets pinched and then you can end up damaging it. Okay, so the next thing is left just to air it up and put it back on the bike. The tire back on the rim, aired up. I put 90 pounds in it to start with. But one thing while I was doing, what I like to do is um, I'll put about 40 pounds in it and then I'll just go around and check, make sure it's fitting on the rim properly. I mean, you don't have to do that. Usually these seat really nice, but it's just something I like to do. You know, put like half the pressure in, look it over, squeeze it, make sure it's fitting on the rim properly. And then... Um, I put the, uh, the little nut on here that holds the Presta valve in place and I just tighten these up by hand. I don't use a tool on them. I just tighten them by hand and then the little Presta nut on the top here, just tighten that by hand obviously because if you're out in the road and have a flat you may need to, you don't want to have to carry a pair of pliers. They don't need to be that tight. Then just put the cap back on if you have one. You don't have to use a cap but if you have one, put it on there. It keeps dust and grime out of there, so it's not a bad idea. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put it back on the bike. Let's see how it looks. So just slide it in place. So there it is. Back on the bike. New tire. And while no one was looking, I did the back one too. How about that? Newer tires on an old bike. So the next step will be, of course, this old seat. It's looking pretty ratty, so we'll get right to that. Reposition the bike on the stand, and we're going to remove the saddle. So you take a six millimeter Allen wrench for this one. Sometimes they're a different size, five or four. This one's six, and there's a bolt right under there. And you just loosen it up. And then once you've got it loose, just for this style, you pretty much just got to take the bolt out. Okay, so there it is. And then you can just lift the saddle right off. So there's a, a part of the seat post that accepts the holder, which is this bit right there. It fits in to allow adjustment of the um, 
fore and aft setting of the saddle. So there's the old saddle removed. We'll take a closer look at this mechanism. So there's a nut on top that has an adjustment so you can tilt the saddle forward or back. This is kind of the old style. They don't really do them like this anymore, but it works. Okay, so what we need to do is get the new saddle. It's not really a new saddle. It's off a BMX bike, but you know, saddles are a personal preference for people. I don't really uh, spend a lot of time. I just get one that's in, you know, good condition. It's not tore up. So somebody can use this one for a while, and then if they don't like it, they can buy a new one. You know, you just, a lot of people, everybody likes a different type of saddle, so there's no way to really know. So I'm going to put this underneath, which is going to be kind of tricky. We'll get it in there as best we can with the nut. Okay, so just get it hooked on the rails like that with the nut in place. And we'll put the lower mechanism in like this. So they kind of clamp, go together like that. And then we have to be careful because the bolt goes up like that, but goes up and touches. It has to uh, thread into the nut, and of course it's kind of a trick to get it just so. Okay, I've got it started. I'll just take the wrench and get it just a little bit snug so we can adjust the seat. Now, I'll have to do this when the bike is level because it's really when it's sitting on a stand, it's hard to tell exactly what's level and not, but I'm going to do a basic adjustment. And then, of course, there's fore and aft movement. It just depends on the rider. So, you know, put it in a basic position, get it on the bike, and then whoever the rider is will have to adjust the seat to their preference. Now, these are a bit tricky. I'm glad they went to a different style. Okay, but that's basically it. So we um, let's go ahead and get it on there, tighten it up. This doesn't have to be super tight, um, but you know, give it a little good pull like that, and it's on. And if it does move or creak, you can go ahead and just tighten it up a little bit more. But a lot of people will have to work with it to get it in the position they want. So there it is. The bike is now pretty much done. Um, what I need to do is take it on a few test rides, put it through its paces, figure out what needs to change, what adjustments need to be made. It's all uh, just riding the bike and getting a feel for it on the road and then figuring out what's, what needs to be adjusted. But that's pretty much it for this bike. I'll keep you posted if there's something significant that needs to change. Um, I'll do another video on it. But for now, this bike is ready for a new owner. And I uh, look forward to helping them out, uh, getting them on the road, and enjoying a nice road bike. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, leave them below. Thank you.